The other day, the Federal Trade Commission issued a new rule that aims to make canceling a subscription as easy as subscribing to a service. The FTC refers to the rule as click to cancel under the logic that one click should be able to cancel a subscription. Now, why is this there? Well, the problem, and, and a lot of my research when I talk about our subscription services, and the way uh, that locks us into this mode of subscribing to more and more content. So the problem is we keep subscribing to more services um, and in digital culture this ranges from newspapers to movies and video games to software. And as we subscribe to more services, people often forget that they subscribed to those services. And I'm sure we've all run into that where you forgot you were subscribed. Maybe you've forgotten right now that you're subscribed to something. And it keeps generating more revenue for those companies. Or you're subscribed to something and you don't actually use it. Maybe you use it once a month and you're subscribed to it monthly. Or you skip a month. And, um, but since they operate, operate through automatic payments, it is hard to remember all the services we were subscribed to. Um, and BMW, for a moment, even offered a subscription to be able to access the heated seats that were already in their cars, right? Basically, we have to subscribe to more and more services in our economy. And this is a good starting point, click to cancel. And the idea is it's just as easy to cancel a subscription as it is to subscribe. But that does nothing about people that are subscribed and just forget they're subscribed. And I call this process unending consumption. And what unending consumption is, is the expansion of the means of consumption based on a subscription whereby an individual's consumption becomes constant and consistent. And I like that term constant and consistent. Uh, I think I've mentioned already in here with Spotify, if you buy physical media for the longest time, the average American spent $45 a year on recorded music. Under the subscription model, Spotify is $9.99 a month, which is $125 a year. And at the end of it, you have nothing else. So you're spending 300% more to be subscribed to something, and you actually get nothing in the end. That's what the basic model is here. Um, and so in another place I write, for consumers, subscriptions provide convenience. But for producers, subscriptions provide endless revenue. And this is really what you, we would call rent-seeking behavior. <laughs> and in that rent-seeking behavior, people are always locked into paying for something. They don't have anything. Um, sometimes businesses now call this inertia. The whole idea is that people who develop a brand affinity, remember we were talking about brands and how important they are last week. Once you've developed a brand affinity, you're more likely to keep buying things from a particular brand. What well, if you subscribe, that makes brand affinity on turbo. Right? Because you're subscribed, you're not even thinking about the fact that you're using something else. Or to use Amazon Prime as an example. Well, if you, if you have Amazon Prime, you're more likely to buy goods from Amazon because you know you get the free shipping. When I moved to Texas, all my family lives in Virginia or New Jersey. If I want to send them uh, holiday gifts, 
it's a lot cheaper for me to just get on Amazon and have the free delivery go straight there than for me to go shopping at a store, even if I can find better, more personalized gifts, right? Then to then buy that gift, you know, if I'm buying my nephew a $25 gift and then I turn around and I'm spending $15 on shipping and handling, well, that doesn't make sense. I could buy him a $40 gift, you know, and have something there. So that also means that we don't use other websites to provide the same service because we're like, ah, Amazon Prime, I'm already subscribed, I'm going to do that first, right? That's the basic model here. Um, some scholars, I just read an article today, um, they're calling this phenomenon with electric vehicles uh, subscriptionization. And what that is, is that it's a quote, subscription as a mechanism for transforming consumer owned vehicles into technological assets that generate rents for auto markets, or automakers. Where we see that is I remember at one point, and I don't know how much you're still doing it, but like Teslas have different features built into the car. But in order to access them, you need a subscription. So they actually limit how far a Tesla can drive unless you pay the subscription. So you've got the, pa the battery power in the car, but you can extend your range by having it a sub subscription to range um, extender or whatever it's called, right? So the idea here is that not only do we have these subscriptions, but they're for more and more things. These subscriptions require credit card information to enable auto pay and are a contributing factor to the ballooning personal debt in the United States. And what ends up happening is, let's say, you know, so click to cancel is a great idea, but it's a base level. One question that I always wonder is, if I'm getting a week-long free trial to something, why do I need to give my credit card information at that point? I'm taking a week-long trial. The day before my trial's up, can't you at that point get an email and say your trial's about to end? If you want to continue, you need to give your credit card information to subscribe, right? The FTC could easily reverse that and say you cannot I'll give a free service for a free trial and require credit card information. Because the basic idea is that then you're subscribed and you'll start paying for it without actively doing something. Um, this is also on the back end of the fact that wages have stagnated for decades. So wages stagnate, we have to pay for more things, which means credit card debt goes up. Um, and we pay for more things, and I've talked to you all about this before, but we pay for more things today than we used to. That goes from internet access, to cell phones, to Amazon Prime, Netflix, Spotify, Microsoft Office 365, Xbox Game Pass, Everand, etc. It just keeps going so that if you want access to particular content or to particular things, you now have to subscribe. When, you know, if you got in your Wayback Machine and went to the 1980s, you didn't subscribe for all this, and wages are basically the same. So we could talk about inflation, and inflation's its own issue, right? But the very fact that we're spending more is a whole nother inflationary pressure. Not in the sense of you're spending more on the same thing, but on the very fact that you're having to spend more on the on more things. It becomes a social need for us. But wait, alongside subscription services is a cottage industry of apps used to detect unused subscriptions. And here, Wells Fargo has an app called Control Tower. Well, you get that automatically if you have Control Tower, but guess what? There's an app called Rocket Money that you can use to manage your subscriptions 
And guess what? It's a subscription. It's a subscription. This is the most mind-blowing meta thing that I can possibly think of. Hold on, you're subscribed to too many things. Well, subscribe to this app here that makes sure that you're not subscribed to things that you don't want.